Hi there, my name is Hannah from Hannah B. Flute, and in today's video, we are going to be talking about all things you need to know when you start playing the piccolo. So if you're interested in more flute and piccolo related content, please subscribe down below. And if you like this video, like, and feel free to comment with any questions you have. All right, so to start, let's talk about what the piccolo is exactly. It is the smallest member of the concert flute family. So it can look like this, it can look like this. It could have a wooden or plastic body and a metal head joint. There are all sorts of combinations. So it developed from the fife and it plays an octave higher than the flute. So while it is in the key of C, it will sound an octave above. So if you play a C in the staff, it'll sound like a C above the staff. Um, and now there are some vintage piccolos out there that are in the key of D flat, which means that if you play a D flat on them, it will sound like a C. However, most music today is written for the C piccolo. So unless you're playing band stuff from the turn of the 20th century, you shouldn't need to worry about that. Now, um, to get into how to play the piccolo, this isn't going to be a tutorial as much as it is going to be just more informational, um, what you need to know when starting. So the first thing is to get a good model. So this is the piccolo I started on. It is an Armstrong 204. It is all silver plated and it has a cylindrical body, which is like the modern metal flute, whereas you'll find plastic and wood piccolos have a conical body. So you can see the hole on this metal one is a lot bigger than the hole on the end of this one. Um, so a lot of people will start on ones with a metal head joint and a plastic body. I have one of those. It's from one of those cheaper brands on Amazon. So I'm not going to show you that today because they aren't the best. I bought it purely to see what it was like. It's better than I thought it would be. However, if you're going to start on the piccolo, you really should stick to reputable brands. Another suitable piccolo to start on that was my first upgrade is this model, which is the Pearl 105. It is actually composite. So there is a blend of wood and plastic in this. Both of those piccolos are around the same price, like twelve to $1,300 new. You can find them for cheaper um, if you buy a used one. Um, so the next biggest tip I can give you is to start playing in the low register. So the nice thing about the piccolo is that it shares all, all of the same fingerings, except for a few uh, of the lowest notes that the C flute has. So. If you're reading the G in the staff, same thing on flute and piccolo, you'll use your left hand thumb, first, second, and third fingers, and your right hand pinky. It just sounds like the second octave of the flute. So that's a good thing to keep in mind. You can actually pull your flute out, play the notes in the second octave on it, and then pick up your piccolo, play them in the first octave to kind of help get a better sound and help figure out what your embouchure needs to feel like and what you need to do with your air to get a good tone. <clears throat> My next biggest tip is to learn alternate fingerings. So on the flute, we have some, we have like the three different B flats. There's the middle finger F sharp and some others. On the piccolo, there are even more to correct for tu tune, tuning issues and, and tone and dynamics. So for example, a common one would be to use for the high G sharp. You would finger two, three, and left hand pinky. And right pinky, that's the standard fingering. You may add some combination of your right hand. I'm not gonna play that right now because I don't have earplugs on hand and it's a little too high. But there are some professional models looking ahead, like this guy, which is my current piccolo, the Homig 650-3. And it has a high G-sharp mechanism, which means when you press this key, the left-hand pinky key, it ever so slightly closes the thumb tone holes. 
So that means I don't have to worry about certain alternate fingerings. I can play a little bit quieter using that standard fingering. But if you don't have that, which most beginner piccolos do not, then you will want to learn some alternate fingerings. Um, now, of course, you can go, by, go out and buy all kinds of piccolo music. There's a lot of great repertoire. More pieces get added to the rep every year. But if you've just spent, you know, a thousand or so dollars on your first piccolo, you may not want to spend a ton of money on music just yet. Luckily, a lot of flute music transfers just as well to the piccolo. Uh, you'll just have to worry about low Cs and C sharps because with the exception of the Nagahara Mini and the Braun Piccolo and maybe a couple others, piccolos can only go down to a low D. So that means a lot of Baroque music transfers really well because it also doesn't go super high. So you don't have to worry about polishing the third octave on the piccolo just yet. You can play some like Telemann, Fantasias, or you know the Bach Sonatas, things like that. And of course the Vivaldi Concertos. So those are technically written for recorder, but the piccolo community stole them. Um, the next tip I have is to take some lessons. So if you already have a flute teacher, they may be able to teach you some of the piccolo. Maybe not because there are some flute players who don't like the piccolo. So even if they could teach you, it may not be ideal. However, some people are piccolo specialists and they can definitely help you out with the piccolo. I don't currently teach live lessons. However, I do have a growing library of flexible flute lessons which are pre-recorded videos going over just one specific topic with coordinating exercises. And I am working on some piccolo specific ones, but a lot of the flute ones transfer well to the piccolo as well. Um, all right, so getting into, going back to getting a good model, you, to choose a piccolo, for your first one, I would really highly recommend sticking to metal and or plastic or composite. So as I mentioned, I currently play on this guy. This is Grenadilla Wood. And as great as it sounds, as warm as it sounds, it requires more maintenance and it is quite a bit more expensive. It's about four to five times as expensive as this guy, the Pearl composite model. Also with more maintenance comes the risk of cracks or not with more maintenance with wood comes the risk of cracks. So actually, as you can see, there are these two little graphite rings, I believe, because a couple years ago, this guy cracked right here. <laughs> and my flute technician was able to repair the crack, but it's still a risk and you, it was not cheap to get it repaired. So if you're just learning, stick with either all metal, the metal or plastic combination, all plastic or all composite. Then you'll want to set a budget. So I'd recommend a thousand to fifteen hundred dollars is a good amount to spend. We did get my Armstrong Piccolo used, so it was about three hundred dollars. Um, so if you are tight on cash, that is an option. That is a much better option than buying the super cheap piccolos that you'll find online, um, which is my next tip to avoid those cheap knockoffs. They are okay for the purposes of trying the piccolo if you have no other way to determine if you would like playing the piccolo and you only have a couple hundred bucks, you can buy one, but go into it knowing that you are probably going to have to upgrade in a few months. All right, my next tip is to try as many piccolos as you can. When we bought my Armstrong, it was the only one I tried and same with the Pearl. But when I bought my Homig, I tried like five or six. I also tried some aftermarket head joints and I just figured, it, I came to find that this combination of the 650 slash three was the one that worked best for me at the time. And Trying multiple piccolos will increase the chances of you finding the right model for you. As you do those trials, 
record yourself. So when I did try professional piccolos, I recorded myself. I sent those recordings blind, like it was just audio to a couple of friends to get their opinions. And that helped me make my decision. Now, obviously my opinion was the one that mattered because it was going to be my piccolo. I was the one spending the money. However, it's still nice to get opinions from other players, from your teacher, things like that. Um, okay, so a quick rundown of the best piccolos for beginners. As I mentioned, both of these guys, the Armstrong 204 and the Pearl 105 are very suitable choices. There's also the Yamaha YPC32 that has a metal head joint and a plastic body. It's a very common one among students. Some of my friends in college marching band played on those for marching band season and they sounded good. There's also the Jupiter 1010 and the Gemine Heart 4P, which are plastic head, head and body. <clears throat> All right, so why should you play the piccolo? It's, you know, it's another instrument to add. It's another instrument to pay for and maintain, you know, more time spent practicing. So why is it worth adding the piccolo? Well, you can access more opportunities. So for context, for example, maybe you're trying to join an orchestra. There are usually only three flute spots available and second and third piccolo, second and third flute often have piccolo parts. So the flute three part is sometimes just piccolo. Sometimes it's combined flute three slash piccolo. Uh, sometimes there isn't even a third flute part, but the second flute part will double on piccolo. A good example of this would be Dvorak New World Symphony. You only play the piccolo for four bars, but you still play it. And being able to play on both flute and piccolo opens you up to those second and third spots. Otherwise, you'd only be able to go after the principal flute part, which means you'd have to be very good at the flute. And of course, you need to be good at the flute and piccolo to get those other spots. But you're just, you're opening up more doors for yourself. You also can access more music. Like I said earlier, there's a growing repertoire of piccolo solo and chamber stuff. So yes, you can play those on the flute, just like how you might play some flute stuff on the piccolo, but it's not, it doesn't hurt to learn the piccolo to play piccolo music. And it can also help with your high register. So I found that sometimes after playing piccolo, if I go back to my C flute, the higher notes feel a bit easier just because that's what I've been used to at that brief moment. Um, and of course, the small size. I mean, come on, it's like, it's so small. <laughs> um, in college or in grad school, I had an orchestra concert where it was like combined with other groups. So we were only playing one piece. I was playing the Pearl at the time and I just had to bring this. I didn't have to bring my flute. So I, it actually fit in my purse as did my regular iPad, which I was using at the time. So it was super nice to just show up with basically, yeah, like I said, my purse and not have to worry about bringing a huge flute bag and balancing multiple instruments and all that. Um, all right. So now there's the head joint. So certain head joints like this, the metal ones, I have not seen with multiple cuts. You're just gonna, it's gonna be what you get. Some have a rounder cut like this Armstrong. Some may have a more square cut. Just depends on the brand and model. Once you get into the composite and wood piccolos, you'll have the option for a traditional head joint, which I don't have to show you but you will have the wave head joint as another option. So here's it on the pearl. There's this little wave here. And then here's what it looks like on the homig. It's a bit more pronounced on this guy. That wave helps direct your airstream into the instrument, which for someone like me who I have a slightly bigger aperture hole and I have an offset embouchure, which is a whole other topic, meaning I don't, play right in the center. I play slightly off to the side. It just helps me get my air where it needs to go. Uh, I would suggest trying both if you can. 
because some people love the wave, some people hate it. It's just personal preference. <clears throat> okay, now for piccolo accessories. Of course, you'll need a cleaning rod. Most piccolos come with one. You'll also need to get a piccolo cleaning cloth. There's silk is the most common one I've seen for the piccolo. There's also the Valentino piccolo wand, which is the length of the piccolo. It has some fabric sewn on one end and you can screw it together so that you can swipe, slide it in all of your piccolo for a quick swab, which is really nice. Um, I'd also recommend a piccolo stand. That way you can rest your piccolo more vertically instead of horizontally during a break. You also don't have to like try and balance it on your lap if you're switching between flute and piccolo. Um, ear plugs, of course, I briefly mentioned those earlier, especially when you're playing in the third octave, even in the second octave, always wear ear plugs because the piccolo is so close to your right ear that, and if you lose your hearing, it's gone. It's not going to come back. So better to protect yourself now so that you don't have to worry about all of that. And then, um, an accessory that you may or may not need, depending on the piccolo that you have, is cork grease. So I say you may or may not need it. Some piccolos on the body tenon will have cork. So the pearl does, the hammock piccolo does, a lot of them do. Most metal piccolos do not. They're just like a flute, metal on metal. So be sure to check the body tenon on your piccolo to see if it has cork. If it does, you will need cork grease. If it does not, do not mess with cork grease. It could only make things worse putting grease onto other joints. So those were just some of my best tips to help you get started playing the piccolo. If you'd like more instruction and actual like tutorials, please check out my flexible flute lessons. I will have that page linked below. I do teach most of the lessons on the C flute, but things like individual notes will often work on the piccolo. And I am working on, again, some piccolo specific lessons. So be sure to stay up to date on those. You can follow at flexible flute lessons on Instagram to learn of when those get released. All right, so once again, thank you for watching. Please like, share, and subscribe, and leave a comment down below with any questions or thoughts you have. See you next time.